So welcome, welcome everybody. I will switch sometimes from English to Russian, yeah? if you don't mind. So, друзья, мы разговариваем с Полом Грубером. So, Paul, where are you on the map right now? I am in Chicago. I'm in a in a in the, in the town of Highland Park, which is a suburb a little bit north of Chicago. Uh -huh. It's very cold. It snowed today. It's been very cold here. So, Paul, let's let's start with the question I have. Uh, um, I I read you are a speech pathology person. What is exactly speech pathology about, and what what does it deal with? Um, well, I hold a master's degree in speech language pathology, mm -hmm. and uh, to to be a speech pathologist, it's a master's or a PhD, and uh, the the training is to work in hospitals and schools, people who've had strokes, people who've had brain injuries or cancer of the mouth, um, or um, you know, some people are born with something called apraxia, mm -hmm. where they they don't have the neurological coordination of the mouth and the tongue. Mm -hmm. You know, they they don't yes. speak clearly. Yes. So we help um, medically. It's it's a, it's a medical uh, 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 education with a clinical experience working in hospitals and schools and teaching people to communicate if they have communication barriers. So that's my background. But I've always been most interested in pronunciation and accents, mm -hmm. and um, I ended up starting this business. Uh, you know, I, I worked in hospitals and schools, but I also started this business in '94, marketing to international professionals on speaking perfect English, um, and that's how this whole thing so started. It, it is not uh, so per speaking perfect English doesn't cover only pronunciation. It is uh, more than that. It's speaking powerfully. Uh, not only is it improving someone's grammar, vocabulary, mm -hmm. fluency, and yes. listening skills, mm -hmm. and it's more than just accent, and it's more than it's than pronunciation. Like, like a lot of my clients, for example, um, they do presentations, and they they do uh, PowerPoint presentations. Mm -hmm. So they would send me, when I work with them, they would send me a PowerPoint, and we would go slide by slide, and they think they're... They're saying things well, but what I do is I not only help them with their pronunciation, but I teach them how to say it more powerfully, more clearly, how to get their uh, point across, how to be persuasive in North American English. Because there's a certain way, there's a certain slang on how to speak clearly and effectively. So that's my little niche, and that's what I do. Okay. Um I know you, you did lots of things, and uh, you worked with uh, uh, people in Afghanistan. I, I, I don't exactly know what, what, what it was about, but my question is, um, maybe you can name a couple of things uh, which you are proud of, I mean, as a, as a professional. You achieved something, and you, you think, good, you are, I'm, I'm proud of myself. Uh, uh, well... First of all, I have a successful marriage and two wonderful sons, so I'm, okay. I'm most proud of that. Um, but professionally, um, let's see, uh, I, I've helped. Okay, here's a, here's an, there's a Japanese doctor. Japanese doctor worked, a, a woman doctor. She went through a divorce. She, has, she had two children. And one of her sons was autistic. And uh, she came to America uh, for to help her son who has autism because he would get better treatment. The problem is her English was so poor that she could not pass her um, medical, her USMLE, the United States Medical Licensing Examination, because of the way she spoke. And you have to take a certain test. She took that test over and over and she finally contacted me. She said, I'm hopeless. I'm hopeless. And she could not work as a doctor. So she was like cleaning houses. And meanwhile, in Japan, she was a physician. And uh, to make a very long story short, I worked with her. I got her speaking beautiful, perfect, clear English. And now she's practicing as a physician, uh, turned her life around. So that's that's one story. I have a story. I can go on and on. There's a story about a, a driver in India who who want, who who was only, was making no money. And I like tripled his salary in three months after he took my program. So I've, I, I've changed a lot of lives. Okay. So you, you measure that in changing lives rather than uh, specific te technicalities of the profession. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. that's what's most important is changing lives. I mean, I, I, I do the same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm okay. proud of changes we, we create in people's life and specifically the tough cases when people were hopeless, as you said, and then we did it. I mean, we, we did it. Everybody said no, ch no chance, no way, forget about it. And then we come and we do it. And that is the, the real 
uh, excitement. That's what, yeah. But professionally, I, I want to say about what I do is I do not use, when I train, I created my own system. I do not use phonetics, mm -hmm. and I don't use the normal charts that you would see with how to pronounce words. Mm -hmm. I, it's a more musical um, approach. I have a musical background. I have a very good ear. I listen to how people speak. Like I've been taking, we started talking a few minutes ago. I started taking notes when you were speaking. Mm -hmm. So I listen to exactly what you're doing, and I just jump in. I start reshaping the vowels, the sounds, and my approach is, is quite different from probably anyone else that's, that's out there. Um, in terms of uh, relationship uh, between um, pronunciation and uh, n not going to overall communication skills, but just specifically pronunciation, um, what is the relationship between pronunciation and, let's say, uh, job interview success and maybe overall career success? Because, um, let's say in Russia, um, teachers pay lots of attention to pronunciation. And they, tor English teachers are torturing kids with uh, doing all that stuff. And uh, they said it, it's so important people stop talking to you. Nobody will understand you unless you have... Uh, I mean, how much is it true? I mean... It's true. It's very frustrating. Uh, you know, as an American listener... Mm -hmm. Uh, English, of course, is my first language. As an American listener, when I'm speaking to someone and I don't understand what they're saying, you know, it, it, it's very frustrating. We lose interest and it's, uh, you know, I, I know learning English, learning English as a second language is very difficult. English is not an easy language. But so many people learn it and they try to master it. Even I, I have so many clients in China and they, they're great. Their grammar, their vocabulary is great. But when they start speaking to me, I have no idea what they're saying, and it's and also from Russia and and so many countries, but and India. But uh, so pronunciation is key because if you can't understand what someone's saying, what's the point of learning English? So it's really it, it's the final um, it's it, it's the final step when you're learning English. It's to clear up all your pronunciation. So that communication is it, uh, g goes freely because when you're listening to someone speak to, you don't want to be stressful trying to figure out what they're saying. You want communication to be very easy. So I think it's very important. Um, and and also my clients mm -hmm. get a lot more confidence after they work with me. Their confidence level goes, you know, for job interviews or presentations. You know, they feel much much more confident. Um, I can say um, uh, from another side of the uh, barricade, um, I can say that <laughs> when, when you speak to someone like Paul, uh, it's much easier to speak ni nicer language. Uh, so then you, you are not thinking, okay, well, what is a good word to say? And uh, you actually pronounce it better when you, when you speak to another immigrant who has um, uh, kind of language barriers. Uh, from whatever country, language becomes naturally so poor, and you, I hate myself when I try to talk to these people. I mean, because I think I can do it better, but you know, just, <laughs> just, just just the choice of who you talk to um, mm -hmm. can make the difference. I'm We've sure. got lots of questions here for you. Uh, question number zero. I put. I, I gave it number zero. Uh, uh, typical. Um, mistakes or let's say imperfections which russians make uh let, let's say specific to russian language uh r's w's v's many vowels um if uh, if you let me coach you a little bit for a few minutes yeah yeah sure i i'll i'll show them all I'll, or not all but some okay so uh, because you you hear me you 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 right you may you might uh, Correct me on, you know, on the go. Um, there is a question, actually mu multiple questions about the same thing. Um, pronunciation of words which are similar in sound but uh, mm, different in the spelling. Yes. Uh, so well, English, uh, English has a, a lot of that. A lot of that as far as you just, you know, it, you can change one letter but... Um, I'm trying to think of words off the top of my head. For example, like um, uh, here, here's a da uh, the name Darius. Darius, okay. D-A-R-I-U-S. Wow. Okay. Darius could be a it's, it could be a man's name. Mm -hmm. The word various, V-A-R-I-O-U-S, various. Yes. Yes. Same pronunciation. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Varius. V A R I O U S is the same pronunciation as Darius. Mm-hmm. Most of my clients can do not pronounce the word Varius correctly. They say Varius, Varus, like mm-hmm. like Varus computers, Varus companies. It's Varius. Varius. Okay. Anyway. That's... Okay. Um... And it's these little things, you know, I don't teach big things. I teach these little things. Mm-hmm. But in connected speech, these little things make a very big difference as okay. far as people understanding. Okay. Uh, out of uh, many, many different accents. So, are there accents which are cute or nice or, and accents which are ugly or kind of, they, they come with negative connotation? So, you want me to rate? No, what's I mean, cute, as, as an American, as, as someone who teaches, so for, from, let's say, from American listener standpoint, are there ugly accents? Wait, 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 wait. you're saying you, you feel that ru- a Russian accent is an ugly accent? No, 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 the question is, which oh. ones are nice and which ones are not nice? That, that is the question here. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, I think I love all accents. I want to be politically correct. I want to say that I love all accents. Mm-hmm. They, they they tell a lot about a person mm-hmm. uh, culturally where they're from uh, so I love all accents I would say maybe a French accent could be a little bit um, you know in a movie a little bit romantic and mm-hmm. I don't know however you know if you can't understand the person or that they're Eng- you know when they're speaking English with that heavy accent it it, ch- it changes things I think all accents are nice Um but some, you know, some are looked down upon a little bit, uh, you know, uh, by some people. You know, we live in a world that uh, people have pre preconceived views, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they start hearing an accent and they, um, they size you up. And they put you in a certain category just by how you speak. So, I mean, it, it can be very subjective by some people. Honestly, over 27 years in the U.S., I, I never experienced anything like that. I, yeah, I maybe you should have to go to some special places. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any um, genetic or kind of, you have to be born with that, uh, talents uh, in uh, sp- specific to uh, learning phonetics of foreign languages? I'm trying to translate on, on the go. I... I believe sometimes there it's a talent. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have clients that s- some of them have an amazing ear. I tell them I say it once, it sticks like glue. Mm-hmm. So some people pick it up very very quickly, but that's unusual. There is but a, I fe- yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, there I is found a con- all. <laughs> Let's finish. <laughs> I was going to say, but I, I find all my clients improve. All mm-hmm. my clients improve. But some people improve just very quickly. Uh, there is another question which is coming together. Uh, would you agree with the statement that uh, someone without uh, a musical kind of quality of the ear um, and uh, de- well-developed uh, ability to mimic uh, sound voices uh, never can uh, learn um, foreign language uh, at the native level no not true everyone can improve and um and i believe with the correct training they can get pretty much to the native level some people speak some people speak like and can learn to speak like a native not everyone but a lot of people can get up there but i want to say that it's more than mimicking mm-hmm. it's more than mimicking it's uh it's a lot of ear training and it's it's understanding what they are doing compared to what, let's say, a typical English native speaker, how they would say it, and understanding those differences. And when you fully understand those differences and can recognize them as you're speaking on the fly, Mm -hmm. that's when you yourself will improve. And that's how the whole thing works. So it's much more than mimicking. Uh, There is a request for life hack. Uh, uh, What is the, actually it was written in English. So what is the foolproof technique to pronounce the nasal ng n, uh, as in long uh, ding dong bring in. okay okay so first of all there's no k like uh, let me let me work with you and show you say the word kick kick so that ends with a k sound k- k- kick kick okay so what i want to say is when and, and all my russian clients all have the same problem 
-hmm. We're talking about the NG ending, mm -hmm. as in the word ring, thing, sing, bring, okay, that, or, or walking, sleeping, jumping, eating, NG, ING endings, okay? Mm -hmm. That NG ending is a combination of the N which is an a, and the G. And what happens in the back of your throat, your, your um, palate rises, your soft palate rises. Mm -hmm. So okay. listen carefully. The sound is ing, ing. It's not ing. There's no K. Because you, you just even said, like, like, like on your finger, you might be wearing a wedding, you might say a wedding ring. Ring. Good. And there's no release of the K. It's a ring. 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 Okay. I will sing. Ring. Sing. 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 Okay. Sing. Walking. Walking. I'm walking and thinking. I'm walking and thinking. Thinking. <clears throat> wait, 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 wait. Slow. Thinking. Thinking. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Think I'm and thi talking. I'm thinking and talking. Yes. Okay. And you know what would help you? You know what would help you? you? Take your hand and do this. Do this up yet. Yeah, up on those NG. Thinking. Thinking. So, talking. Wait, wait a second. so the, the tongue goes up, you mean? No. It's the roof of your mouth. The palate goes up. when it, You can't feel it. Okay. But it's happening all the way in the back of your mouth. Ing. 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 Yes. Ing. But keep okay. in mind. There's okay. no K release. It's not ink. There's no K. In okay, walking and uh, thinking. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Okay. I want to phrase. Okay, I'm thinking about you. Yeah, I can say. Um, I remember you've got a bunch of small videos. I, 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 I'm not sure if you do it the same way now, but it was like 10, 15 minute, 12 minute, uh, bunch of those for different issues like ink and uh, R and uh, TH and uh, all that stuff, yes. Right, you're talking about my video course. Yes, yes. So my video course has 16, yeah, 16 of these video classes. But some of them are on YouTube now, the, the older ones, the three by four, no? Well, they're stolen and pirated, but we're still selling them. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So you didn't change, I mean, I mean uh, you didn't change dramatically over, let's say, last 10, 15 years what, what you're doing or? Is we it? updated, yeah. We updated the program mm -hmm. and we added new content. Okay, okay. And that's in that's in my program now. Yeah. Um, uh, I know some linguist uh, who says that if I will speak with uh, an accent, then um, English-speaking people will not understand me. Uh, no matter uh, if it is U.S., uh, U.K., or any other English-speaking country. I'm sorry, Mike, ask me yeah. the question again. The question, uh, again, is, uh, there is a linguist who says to that person that if you're going to speak with an accent, with an accent, then people will not, English speaking people will not understand you, uh, neither in uh, US, UK, or oh. any other country. Not true. Not um, true. I mean, we, you know, I mean, uh, uh, North America. U.S. and Canada, for example, is a big melting pot of, of international, you know, professionals with every accent. And we understand. But 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 what happens very often is there are pockets, you, you know, someone from Russia or India or China could be speaking. But you have little pockets of words that and you don't know what they said. You know, mm -hmm. that's the problem. So you have these little pockets of unintelligible speech. Um my observation is it really depends uh, on uh, level of education of uh, who you talk to i mean educated people are much much better in uh, recognizing the um, accents and uh, let's say truck driver has uh, i mean less chances to understand you compared to let's say university professor oh as far as, far as understanding the accent and speech yes yes yeah mm -hmm. um um, I would say there is another difference which I uh, I was surprised with when we just came to the United States. Let's say you say something and the person doesn't understand exactly what you said. And then um, you say, excuse me. 
and then um, you see different different ways uh, people are trying to actually get through so let's say uh, let's say Europeans okay are more likely to rephrase kind of uh, mm -hmm. Let's say uh, Africans are more likely to repeat it exact same way. <laughs> Ex I mean, they don't change anything. They they can repeat it ten times. They are not getting angry or upset with you as they just do it exact same way. That's a very interesting observation. Um, yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't noticed that, but it's it's probably true. Um, as to me, um, the there is a toughest uh, sound in English pronunciation, and that is the. T H E. So any any maybe some again life hack or okay. So the T H sound. Th yeah. There are certain friction sounds in American North American English. T H being one of them. It's a friction sound, and you need to realize that the listener needs to clearly hear the friction. And the trick for that is blowing on your hand. So follow me. Take your hand on the palm and blow. <sighs> now. You're going to do the same exact thing, same thing, except your tongue comes through your teeth, but focus on the blowing on your hand and say the word think. Think. I thank you. I thank you. She thinks about me. She thinks about me. Now, at the end of a word, take a, take a bath. Take a bath. Go up north. Go up north. South south one month one month that's the thing because when when um many of my, my many of my clients might do the the correct thing with their mouth but they say one month one month or um take a bath it's right. not take a bath it's take a bath so that th is like a punch okay. it's like a punch a bath okay a bath a bath a blow bath, a bath. Okay, you have to exhale. Okay, and you have to blow. There was mm -hmm. a birth at the hospital. There was a birth, birth at the hospital. And don't forget all the little words. The now, now in the middle, m repeat. Mother. Mother. The other brother. <laughs> the other brother. Great. Okay. Now all the little words. The this they these those that the. they are all. It's not. I saw the movie. Uh -huh. I saw the movie. I saw the movie. The and it's movie. a V. A v. New, new subject. Okay. Movie. V. V. Yeah. Movie. Yes. V. Yes. V. Ah. Okay. Movie. V. Movie. I movie. saw that movie. I saw that that movie. V. Right. Yeah. I know my, I my, my V is not good because when anytime I say port knob, what's your last port knob? And they say, what is the last one? B, V, they, they, they don't get that V out mm. of me. Yeah. I can help you. Mike. Okay, sure. Uh, it was a question, by the way. So you, you, you listen to me. I mean, you, you can hear me. Uh, I'm 61 and uh, I'm kind of busy at work. And uh, is it, I mean, is it possible to dramatically reduce my accent? And what is the uh, cost in terms of time and effort, uh, that, that part? Uh, 15 minutes a day as far as practicing that's it that's 10 it? to 15 if you have if you have time 10 to 15 minutes a day okay try to do it every day okay uh, spread the training out over a period of about three months okay and work with me I mean I provide uh, you know I work with people on a weekly basis okay sign, sign me in sign me in and and it, it works but very is it, well. Is it face to face or is it kind of uh, listening to tapes or? It's a combination. Okay. It's uh, it's taking what I suggest to my clients is taking mm -hmm. my video program mm -hmm. and purchasing it on through mm -hmm. my website, sure. and then working with me um, live over Skype or you know WebEx or or FaceTime. You know we okay. have many different ways, and when you put that those together. You know, you're getting because as when I work with someone, I'm also typing in the chat window my mm -hmm. notes so they mm -hmm. can practice with my notes. So it's it's the one on one personal coaching. Okay. Plus, it's getting everything reinforced from the video course. OK, OK, very good. Um, uh, another question. So why um, American uh, speech um, 
is easier to comprehend uh, compared to British. Sometimes I cannot understand any single word of whatever uh, Brits are uh, saying. Me too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have the same problem. Yeah, I mean, it's there's all you know. There's the Cockney accent, and there's the the high royal. Ho, 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 ho. You know, there's all all the different um, ways of of speaking in in Great Britain mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. Their vowels are different. Um, I don't know. It, it, there's there's so many similarities between the American mm -hmm. accent and the British accent. There are many similarities, mm -hmm. but there are things, especially when it comes to vowels, that are very different. Uh, and, sometimes I watch uh, older uh, movies, like let's say I Love Lucy, that that thing. And Lucy. They, yeah, and they speak to me li like Brits do. I mean, it's so much British compared to the language uh, spoken around here t today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, things um, have changed too. You know, that was like what the fifties. So yeah. you know that language has changed. Which culture. flavor? Which flavor of uh, let's say which? Uh, Okay, let's say flavor of uh, English, British, uh, American, Australian. Uh, would you prefer, would you suggest uh, to someone who is not going to live in the English speaking country, but uh, he needs that for travel, you know, just to, to communicate normally around the globe. So which uh, dialect would be uh, more appropriate? Uh, I... I can. The only way I can answer that is just tell you what I what my clients tell me. Mm -hmm. So my clients who come from every country in the world, I very often they, they take my program because they specifically tell me that they want to learn the American accent and they want to sound American because they like the sound of it. Um, I mean, in Aust I have clients in Australia. I have clients in Australia who speak English as the first language in Australia, but they want to learn the American accent as well. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't have an opinion, but I just know that my clients very often wish to sound more American. I don't know okay. if that's the hot accent of the time right now. I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I can read uh, English with God's help nicely. I have uh, good enough comprehension, about maybe 95%. Maybe I need to improve a little bit uh, you know, of my grammar, but... Oh, I mean, his comprehension of written text. But uh, my uh, uh, comprehension is not, is not moving anywhere. Any suggestions? His li listen listening skills, yes. Very common. Yeah. So this gentleman or woman is not alone. Very, very common. I hear that a lot with my Chinese clients as well. Um, I, I would say you have to improve your listening skills. And that just comes by immer immers immersing yourself in the language, mm -hmm. watching, I would say, watching movies, watching American television, American movies, American news, um, uh, watching it with subtitles, and then working on removing the subtitles. Um, take, get a movie that you love, that you know the story really well, but listen to it as spoken in English, maybe a Russian movie that's dubbed in English or something. Uh, I think maybe subtitles, no subtitles, turn on, off. Yeah, I think that would be very helpful. Um, there is someone here who probably needs some positive motivation. Is it possible to get rid of Russian accent completely by means of daily practice and speak as a native speaker regardless of age? I had conversations uh, with native speakers and most of them are in a big doubt about it. Probably my English scared them so much. But I still believe that I can do it. <laughs> well, um, honestly, you can do it. It's doable. I mean, most uh, so many people don't know about what I do, but um, it's very possible. And I have many, many clients, especially in, in Russia, mm -hmm. um, who because I've worked with people like in Moscow, for example, over Skype, that started out with me with a heavy Russian accent and now speak as if they were born in the United States. So it's very doable. It's not impossible. It takes a little bit of practice. The thing is, you can't do it on your own. Unfortunately, you can't just listen and magically your accent's going to change. You need someone who knows what they're doing to coach you and to reshape. But does it go to international levels, the music of the language? Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Intonation, uh, syllable stress. Ryth rhythm. Yeah, word connections. Yes. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Every, you know, I mean, when I work with someone, it's not just vowels and consonants. It's what you just mentioned. It's intonation, syllable stress, word stress, um, the prosody, the musical melody of the yes. sentence. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, there is a question if there are, if you can suggest maybe any exercise or maybe some resource where people can learn it uh, for practicing, practicing with their uh, articulation. www pronunciationworkshop.com okay. i mean that's what i do that's what okay. i do i don't want to try to sell but that's that's what i do i mean uh uh you know you can get books with like uh, you know with 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 pictures of the, yeah. the profile yes it's, it's frustrating it's very frustrating to look at those things and you know google you can click on you know uh, google for example you can listen to how words are pronounced yes but to actually reshape and change the way you speak, um, there's, a, there's a million words in English. You cannot memorize how to pronounce every word. So you have to learn in groupings. You'll have to have the, the, uh, sound groupings. And that's, that's how you can change your accent. It's the only way to do it. Um, any, any suggestions? Um, um, well, whatever, I mean, besides the website you, you just mentioned, uh, maybe there are some sources, I don't know, some classic books, some, um, you know, something a trick. Which, is, which is must. Well, uh, uh, what, what I tell a lot of my clients to do is to get books on tape, like audio books. Mm -hmm. This is after they've been practicing. They would, get, they, would, they would get the actual book in English, and they would get an audio book, or, you know, you know through uh, iTunes or something, they would get the audio of the book as spoken by an American speaker or an American author. So you would be listening to the book and reading the book at the same time, listening to how they say it, stop, try to imitate the paragraph. That's a good way to practice. Um, when we came here 27 years ago, um, and we had access only to public television, uh, no cable um, yet, and um, I listened to um, politicians uh, there was a channel where they translated uh, whatever they discuss in uh, California legislation. And I like them. I mean, they, they, they talk like teachers. I mean, they are professionals. Each and every sound is so clear. Mm -hmm. So politicians must, must be pretty good in that stuff. Good at communicating. And, yeah, yeah. And another thing, I remember the first people we communicated with here, um, uh, they were social workers. Mm -hmm. And I, I can say social workers, they probably uh, trained that way. They talk to you, have no idea of English, but you understand what they are saying pretty much. They, mm -hmm. they know mm -hmm. how to say it the way you understand. So, well, they're also trained you know, to communicate with their clients and be patient and be good listeners. And I'm sure, yeah. Um, the last one. I speak with no accent and I speak fast, but endings of the sounds or uh, endings, endings, endings uh, I swallow. Okay, so it kind of gets lost. You know. uh, is there any way to get rid of that uh, habit? Ending well, word endings are important, especially D's, mm -hmm. D's, uh, and S's and Z's. Okay. You can make, uh, you know, I don't know the exact issue, but word endings are very important. Like, um, uh, uh, applauded, like, uh, needed, she needed, for example, she needed me. Yes. Uh, very often, it's like did, D-I-D, -D, I did. did, you know, she did, I needed. You need to get those Ds and pop them up, did. There needs to be a release. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not did, I did, I did that. I did that. It is a release of the D. That's an example, but it goes for a lot of other sounds. You can make word lists. You can practice. You know, this this uh, person who asked the question um, said that they're a very good speaker in all other areas. So they could, you know, they can get a, a open a book, try to practice, focus on the word endings. Um, I can say um, uh, lots of people who speak Russian, for example since it is my native language. So lots of people who speak Russian, they will swallow endings of the words, especially if they speak fast. And sometimes you you have to ask them, you know, 
what what they meant. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I, I mean, even even we speak, we are native uh, to that language, so we we sometimes have to clarify what what was meant to say. And they're and they're taking what they learned from their first language, they're carrying it over on, now onto their English. That, so may, maybe it is traveling from language to language. It's not specific to the to the second right. language. Yeah. Okay, uh, Paul. Before before we uh, say bye to our listeners, uh, I want you to come with something which cool, valuable, um, something which uh, might change a little bit, you know, people's life in terms of language, in terms of pronunciation. Besides things like uh, let's work hard and you know. Okay, something. so I'll give you I'll give you a little trick. Okay. Um, uh, first, let's talk about the ch sound, as in chop, chop, chop. So repeat, chop, 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 chop. That's a ch. Okay, ch, ch. Lips forward, ch, 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 ch. Like ch, a train, ch, choo, 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 choo. So this is here's the trick. Every choo, time choo. you see a word in English that mm -hmm. is spelled with a tr, and this goes for you, Michael, with a tr, you yes. do not pronounce a tr. It's pronounced as a C-H-R. So, for example, the word tree, you say, oh, I'm looking at the tree, the tree. Yes. yes. It's a tree. So, Repeat. Tree. Wait a minute. Chur. 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 Re. Re. Chur okay. re. So, it's not train. It is train. Train. I took a train. I took a train, train. I will I, try. I will try. I will I try. I will try to grow a tree. I will tr try to, uh, to grow. grow a tree. tree. Per perfect. And now, tree. in the middle of the word, my it's the same TR. My country. My country. Right. It's not my country. See, you, you see that word and you see a TR. Yes. You don't realize that it's, it's not a TR, it's a CH. Country. Country. And I've been to many countries. I've been to many countries. And I'll bet for the rest of your life you will countries. say that correctly now. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, on your YouTube channel. So, you, you have YouTube channel. Do, do you post uh, something people might go and you know, kind of pick up small things or... I've been posting things on Facebook on our on our pronunciation workshop Facebook page. Uh -huh. I haven't lately. I haven't been lately posting things on YouTube. I'm busy with uh, projects right now in Vietnam and China. Um, mm -hmm. But the plan is the plan is to build up uh, YouTube. And the and the other thing is is we're planning to make a whole new version of my video training program eventually uh, okay. to be sold. So I never really pushed YouTube, but I I've always been pushing my my video course. You know, to um, sell. Um, how would I get into that uh, program myself, since, since you motivated me? Okay, so you go to our website, pronunciationworkshop.com. Okay. And you can purchase you can purchase the video course. Yes. Uh, you is, can is it down downloadable or it it's comes all, in the box? It, it used to. It used to be on a DVD, but now everything's online. Okay. So it, it, you get it instantly, and um, you can use it on your on your smartphone, on your iPad, on your computer, plays on everything. Okay. And there's a total of 16 video classes. Each class is about 20 minutes long. Some are longer, some are shorter. Okay. As I mentioned, we recommend taking the course over a period of about two to three months. Uh, so, as of today, what is the price tag? Two twenty nine. Okay. I've never changed. It was always been two twenty nine. Okay. And then um, we also offer live training. And someone, if someone wants to work with me personally, they can. And then the, the best thing that we have on the website, I call the combo package, which is the full video course plus live training. And, um, and that's available, too, at a discount on the website. How many hours are in that uh, combo uh, of in, live training? In that combo of live training, it's one hour, one personal hour with me, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the price for that is three nineteen. It's actually discounted right now. It's three hundred nineteen dollars, and um, for many of my clients, that's all they need. They take the video course, they work with me, they get much faster results, and that's all they need. But if they really loved working with me and they want to speak as perfect as possible, they can sign up for additional sessions. We have different like packages and things like that. 
Okay, because I think, or oh, maybe, maybe um, I mean, you you have experience in that, so you 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 might maybe estimate. But I um, I think well, maybe one hour is, is not much. I mean, for many people, it is. For many people, they get such um, impressive results. That's all they need. But then again, I have clients that want to speak perfect American-sounding English, and they want to do more. So okay. it really depends on the goal. No, okay. the, you know what the person's looking for. Okay, when you, when you um, hear me, so is it like ninety percent, ninety five percent, ninety nine percent? So, um, of, 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 my question is, uh, do you understand <laughs> me well? I mean, how yes. would you estimate? There were things. There were things you said that I didn't know what you said. There were few, just a few, few things. Okay. Um, now I don't remember what the words were, but there were a few things that you said I wasn't sure. But um, very little. I mean, you're a very good speaker. Your English is excellent. Your grammar, your fluency, your vocabulary, it's all excellent, as you know. Um, but if you were the type of person that wanted to s s sound more, as if, you were, if, if, if uh, English was your first language, okay. I could certainly help you get to that point. Uh, so if there are going to be people in Russia making fun of my English, I will refer them to that video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure th okay, thank you very much. And uh, um, I just hope it is not the last time you talk to our uh, audience because you, I'm, I know you're going to have lots of fans on our channel. So if you can allocate sometimes, you know, half an hour, actually. I would love to. I, I thank you, Michael. I thank you for this opportunity and um, greetings to everyone watching. And, and if I could just throw in, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And. Um, if you're interested, you know, contact me. I, I would be, I would love to help you, and I'm passionate okay. to help you as well. Okay, and, and I will see you in a virtual classroom. Terrific. Have a great night.